Boom! We are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Nolan Hawkeye Anthony YouTube channel. And I thank all of you for being here, wherever you may be. And of course, however you may be listening. Well, it is, it's kind of the off season in college football. This video is going to be about how much things have changed. And I think it's a good top it, it, in the realm of college football. And I think it's a good topic, uh, especially as kind of a, an expectation uh, setter for my fellow Hawkeye fans and probably other fans across uh, the country. The transfer portal, NIL, and everything has just drastically changed the landscape of college sports. With that, there's good and there's bad. And I think a lot of people kind of are all over as far as how they feel about that, especially the fan bases. You know, there's some of uh, some of us who definitely believe that people should have freedom and, and uh, basically free reign to make whatever choice they they want to make without penalty as long as it's not harmful or illegal or anything like that then there's you know some who fall more on the traditional uh loyalty players need to stay loyal to the program that they're on and and if there's no more loyalty in college sports then it's it's no longer college sports Regardless of where you fall on that, the bottom line is it has changed. And for example, the bowl game, the college football playoff has essentially made it to where the bowl game is basically an ex exhibition game. The, the bowl game essentially means nothing before it didn't mean a whole lot either, except for how you finished in the final uh, final week rankings. Um, and in general, it was good to win a bowl game and have that trophy and say that your team won that particular bowl game. But now, outside of the college football playoff, it just doesn't. Uh, I think now... You, if you're not in the college football playoff, you have a lot of players who forego playing in the bowl game, the, especially the top older players. Uh, they forego playing in the bowl game in order to start preparing for the NFL draft. We saw that last year with Tyler Goodson. And I don't think he's going to be the only one who does that. We're also seeing many players not even wait waiting until the bowl game to hit the transfer portal not just uh not just reserve players but starters if you look at the Iowa Hawkeyes Justin Jacobs has decided to hit the transfer portal Keegan Johnson Arlen Bruce now I will get into those players uh and whether I think they will 100% stay in the transfer portal but that is an example of how things have drastically changed. They just have. And what I'm saying with the college football, uh, or excuse me, with bowl games is it has essentially become an exhibition game for young talent on your roster, for reserve talent on your roster, or talent that isn't good enough to go to the NFL uh, and things like that. But as far as one team at their top strength, and another top team at their top strength going against each other in a great bowl game matchup. That's just not the case anymore. Kentucky last year had multiple players decide not to play in the bowl game. And so uh, that is just where we're at, folks. We are at a situation where bowl games really mean nothing. They're just a way to develop talent and to get extra practices um, and so on and so forth. Transfer portal. At the beginning of the transfer portal this year, uh, especially for the Iowa Hawkeyes, there were a lot of guys who were deciding 
on offense, on the offensive side of the ball to hit the transfer portal. And I thought that it was an addendum on the Iowa Hawkeye offense. Now, that's probably mostly true. But we have since seen a lot of guys enter the transfer portal on defense as well. Terry Roberts, uh, Justin Jacobs. There might be a few more, but those are the two main Reggie Bracy. And it sucks because if you think about it, I was thinking about this yesterday with regards to Terry Roberts. I saw that he was giving given or extended a, a scholarship to Penn State his home state of Pennsylvania. And it's just interesting because, and and it sucks because you look at a school like Iowa, who their main source for competing is taking under the radar talent that the big guys don't see and developing, developing them into starters or high, even high end, high caliber potential NFL players and now with the transfer portal you can have the the fruits of phil parker's labor in developing uh recruiting and even finding said talent in the first place go to penn state the fruits of his labor can go to penn state and that sucks that absolutely sucks now On the flip side, Iowa has been the beneficiary of that as well with with Mac Maction guys coming to play for Iowa. Uh, You know, Zach Van Volkenberg from Hillsdale came and played for Iowa. So, you know, it's not a one way street. And I understand that. So this is absolutely wild. And the point is, guys, is that this is the new norm. I thought that this was an addendum on the Iowa Hawkeye offense, uh, which I think it somewhat is, but I also think that this is the new norm that you're going to see multiple, multiple guys hitting the transfer portal before the bowl game, before the season starts. And essentially what you're going to be getting is a situation where guys are pushed off of rosters because now programs are allowed to basically form their 85 player roster that in other words, they don't have a limit of how many guys they can get out of the transfer portal. They can form their 85 man roster scholarship or yeah, 85 man roster. I can't remember if it's scholarship or not. I think it is. Yes. 85 scholarship, uh, 85 man scholarship roster. However they want, there's no limit on transfer portal guys. Th- th- there's none of that. So now you will get a situation where guys are pushed out of rosters who perhaps were not as good as as uh, a lot of people thought they were coming out of high school. They're remaining loyal to the school, but they're being pushed out. And that's not a boo-hoo thing uh, necessarily. It's it's just the reality. Um, I, the, the, the reality is there is – you cannot have thousands of guys hitting the transfer portal and there not be some downside – to all those guys hitting the transfer portal. So as far as the transfer portal and some names to watch, you know, I don't pay for subscriptions um, to get insider information. Usually that information comes to me via another fan and, and I'm very happy for it. Um, You know, I I'm grateful to the fans who will send it my way because they want to hear my take uh, on the situation. Um, so, but the point is, is I don't know the recruiting board necessarily of all the transfer guys, but I do know some of the names. One high level name, uh, was Treshawn Holden out, uh, from out or excuse me, who was a scholarship player for the university of Alabama. Now there, there was as recently as like Saturday or Sunday, a, crystal ball in the favor of Treshawn Holden that uh, went away. I'm not sure what happened with that. I, I'm not even sure if he is one of the guys who's going to be officially visiting uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes. 
Um, he might be. Man, how crazy would that be if Iowa got Treshawn Holden? Um, Cade McNamara has done a great job of recruiting and um, building some, albeit foo fake optimism in this Iowa Hawkeye offense. Because, because let's be honest here, folks. Regardless of of you getting Kate, and I said this when Iowa got Cade McNamara. Regardless of you getting Cade McNamara, he can can by himself make the offense slightly better just because he's a good player. But overall, the offense and the scheme and the play calling is the same. And so if that's the same, it's still not going to be good. The product still is not going to be good. Now, ultimately, as Iowa fans, all we're looking for is just average uh, average production on the field. So, Treshawn Holden would be one. Um, Eric All, uh, Eric All, uh, tight end out of Michigan, who had a really, really, really great year two years ago, but didn't didn't see nearly as much production last year for whatever reason. Um, Iowa tried to recruit him uh, out of high school. They offered him a scholarship, uh, and he was actually pretty high on Iowa, but ultimately he chose Michigan. Right now he is favored to choose the Iowa Hawkeyes. I think that would be an excellent addition. I I really, really do. Uh, Because with Sam Laporta leaving, you basically have uh, Luke uh, Luke Lachey and a bunch of young tight end prospects. Now we saw some, uh, we saw some positive momentum with true freshman Addison Ostranga, uh, but still very, very young guy. Um, and Iowa, not only are you losing Sam Laporta, but you're also losing Steven Stilianos. So you need a guy to come in who can be a buffer, a bridge, uh, between Sam, you know, Sam Laporta, Luke Lachey, Steven Stilianos, and that next crop of tight ends. So that would be a pretty nice get if Iowa can get him. There's some other transfer wide receivers. Uh, there's a DB from Harvard. Um, there's, uh, you know, uh, a wide receiver from Hillsdale uh, who will be officially visiting Iowa. He also officially visited Iowa State. Um here, Michigan tight end Eric All, who entered the transfer portal on Monday, is taking an official visit to Iowa tomorrow. Uh, Alex Washington is the Harvard DB uh, who gra- uh, graduate transfer who was given a scholarship offer. We're going to wrap this up here, guys. I think Iowa has a good chance of landing all of them. And what I want to say in conclusion is that college football has changed forever. And as Iowa fans, we need to understand that we need to expect multiple guys to hit the transfer portal, including starters. Now I heard that Keegan Johnson is not set on leaving the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll see what happens with that. I don't want to get your guys hopes too much uh, up too much on that. It would be great if he returned. Hell, it'd be great if Arlan Bruce returned. Uh, It really would. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, you know, in general, Iowa had no other choice, but to start getting active in the transfer portal. You cannot lose as many guys as they have lost, uh, leaving Iowa and not, you know, (laughs) and not, uh, try and replace that with the same thing. You just have to, there's no choice because it's either that or, have a 28, 30 man, uh, freshman recruiting class. And, you know, there's positives to that, but there are certainly downsides in that you're not going to have an, you're not going to have immediate assistance to your roster, uh, next year. And in general, in general, out of every like 20 man recruiting cycle, maybe 10 are going to become solid contributors for your program. Um, so those are the guys that are coming in. I'm happy Iowa has decided to get, uh, active in the transfer portal. 
Um, by the way, I was totally right about Jeff Brom going back to Louisville. I called that a couple days ago. Here is the updated uh, how many scholarship guys have left each Big Ten school to the transfer portal. Iowa is quite high considering they don't have a coaching change. I mean, some of these other teams are teams with coaching changes. Um, so, yeah. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think of the transfer portal and this crazy wild, wild west we are in with college football. Uh, very curious what you guys think in the comments. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you guys want to donate to the channel, you absolutely can. I appreciate all of the super chats and the super donations. Uh, and last but not least, DBAP, don't be a pussy willow. Impacts our feelings because your feelings just don't matter. Love you guys. See you guys next time. Go Hawks. Bye-bye.